And Poe Lemic writes in with a really good question on 4K video switchers for TVs. Now, this is not the video switcher I use here for production, but a switcher that allows you to connect more devices up to your 4K or HD television. And I don't know if you've been noticing this, but on many of these new 4K TVs, like the two I have here in my house, they only have three HDMI inputs, which makes things uh, very limited in that you have to manually switch things around or perhaps invest in a switch box. And uh, Poe was wondering if I could review one of these things. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I did do some research tonight uh, in response to this question. So he's got one here for uh, $8.60 on eBay, which looks like a good deal. And it says, hey, 4K Ultra HD, it does everything you might want it to do but you've got to look at the specifications on this stuff. So that is what I did here. And uh, when you dig a little deeper, you see there's some limitations. So take a look first at number three there, the video output signal. It is HDMI 1.4B. Now, while that supports 4K, it only supports 4K at 30 frames per second, which means that a lot of the 60 frames per second content that's on YouTube and some other platforms won't play or you'll get or diminished uh, playback with a uh, frame rate of half of what it's designed for. So that's an issue, right? Uh, the other problem is the HDCP support. So you see it supports 1.0 or 1.1. So going back to our Netflix and Amazon video question, uh, if you don't have uh, HDCP 2.2 support for those 4K sources, they won't play back on your television. It'll divert back down to 1080p because uh, 2.2 is the new DRM standard for all this new 4K stuff. And if your switch box here doesn't support that, you're out of luck. So the chances are, if you're trying to watch 4K Netflix with a device that's plugged into this box, uh, you're not going to get it. So uh, this one, I would say, uh, is one of those deals where you get what you pay for. And uh, $8.60 might be good for, H for just regular HD 1080p content, but I would not suggest going further than that. Uh, so then he sent me another one here that costs a little bit more. This is the Blackbird 4K 5X1 from Monoprice. And when we look at the specifications on that, we've got some similar issues here. Again, it only supports uh, HDMI 1.4, which means that it won't do more than 30 frames per second on uh, 4K video. And this one also uh, does not support HDCP 2.2. So many 4K video sources still won't play, even though you can get uh, 30 frames per second at least out of it. And this one costs a little bit more because it does have a higher data rate, but uh, that data rate's not going to help you here because, again, it's not supporting the 60 frames per second 4K content, nor uh, will it support the, uh, the HDCP DRM that uh, the these formats are requiring now. So that one's kind of out of the mix as well. I did find one here. I haven't tested this, so I don't want to recommend it just yet. But if you're daring, this one, at least on its specifications, kind of meets all the things that I would be looking for in a switch box. Uh, 4K at 60 hertz, which they're advertising here. Uh, HDMI 2.0, which I believe will support that uh, frame rate at that resolution. HDCP 2.2, which is all the things that you want out of one of these things. It costs about $52, though, so you can see how uh, cost escalates as you go on here. But this one claims to support uh, 18 gigabits per second, which is the uh, latest you're, you're going to want to look for for your HDMI content. Because I guess there's some new uh, HDR video coming that can do stuff on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Kind of crazy what's going on right now with video formats. And you got to make sure you got the right cables to go with this stuff. It's very complicated. And again, though, you want to make sure that uh, whatever switch box you have will support the video formats you want. So everything that you see on this one is what you want to look for, especially if you are uh, playing back 4K content. But again, I haven't tested this one, so I can't say if it works, but uh, the reviews look good on Amazon, and this one might be uh, worth taking a look at if you are daring. And I've got a link down below to an Amazon affiliate link where you can find that product. But what I do here at my house is uh, run everything through my receiver. I talked about this before. I'll link to my mini review of it down in the video uh, master playlist. Uh, but my uh, receiver here has four inputs. This supports all the things that I need. So it does 2.2 HDCP. It does the 4K at 60 frames per second. Everything I plug into it works, and I can still get uh, all of my uh, audio formats piped through it just fine. And uh, one thing that I might do if I start running out of HDMI ports is uh, run the ARC port out of my television back into it so I can pick up two more ports on the TV yet still get my uh, digital audio delivered over to the receiver. But that was one of the reasons why I went with the NVIDIA Shield TV and recommend it so highly because it replaced a whole bunch of stuff that I had hooked up to my TV before. So it replaced my streaming box. It replaced my game console for the most part. I still have an Xbox plugged in, but I play more on the Shield than on the game console. Uh, and it also got rid of my Blu-ray player. So I was able to consolidate uh, into a single box. And again, having a receiver is really helpful. This receiver, I think, costs about $280 or so, but it uh, really works great. It's nothing, it's no frills, but it's a, a 
decent home theater receiver for a small space, and it, it was exactly what I was looking for, and I get uh, the ability to get more ports hooked up to my television in the process. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.